Welcome back to another Mac Deck Tech. Today we're going old school with a highly upgraded precon with 27 non land cards having been swapped out, allowing us to really speed run these dungeons, gaining value every step of the way, and still helmed by Sephiroth of the Hidden Ways. We have my Infinite Dungeon Deck. Sephiroth of the Hidden Ways is a dungeon venturing commander from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms that looks for us to bin a number of our creatures in order to reanimate them. We have a few ways of achieving this goal, with the ultimate goal of the deck being to create an infinite loop that lets us just continuously run through these dungeons, dealing damage, gaining treasures, drawing cards, all in the process. While we won't go over every card in the deck, we'll touch on a few key categories, and as always, there will be a link in the description below so that you can take a look at the entire deck, and even playtest it over on Moxfield. Not a sponsor of the channel, just a good service. First up, let's take a look at the cards that are going to allow us to venture into the dungeons. No binning of our creatures required. Asarok, the Archlich. Uh, so for three mana, we have a 5-5. Five, five. Obviously, we're not actually getting them out. Generally speaking, we're not going through the Tomb of Annihilation as a dungeon. Uh, but they'll just bounce themselves back to our hands, and we get to venture into a dungeon when we do so. So a repeatable three mana source of dungeon recursion. Barrowin of Clan Under. So Barrowin is going to let us venture whenever he ETBs, and whenever he attacks, if we've completed at least one dungeon, we get to return a card with mana value three or less from grave to battlefield. Uh, we complete these dungeons pretty quickly. And we have a lot of creatures who have mana value 3 or less that we wouldn't mind seeing come back to the field. So, we're happy to see him. Midnight Pathlighter follows up Clan Under and makes it so our creatures can't be blocked except by legendary creatures. And more importantly, whenever one or more of our creatures deal damage to a player, we're going to venture into a dungeon. So, with this we can actually attack three different you know, opponents, possibly venture three times in a single turn, pretty strong. The unblockability is also just like a little icing on the cake. Nadar, Cephalus Paladin, follows up the Pathlighter. They have quite a few things going for them. They are a three mana, three three with Vigilance. Whenever they ETB or attack, we get to venture into a dungeon. And they act as a lord for all of our creatures once we've completed a dungeon. It'd be nice if it was stacked for each time we completed a dungeon, but I understand why it doesn't. Seasoned Dungeoneer follows up our Paladin, and they're giving us the initiative. We actually don't have a ton of cards in the deck that focus on taking the initiative, but I don't mind Undercity. I think it's actually pretty decent early on as a way to kind of get a little bit of value. Um, but just having the initiative is strong for us, because that means that our upkeep, assuming we still have it, we're going to get a free venture through whatever dungeon we're in, and if we're not in any of them, we're going to go back to the Undercity, which is a quick enough dungeon to complete. Trumpin Adventurer follows up our Seasoned Dungeoneer. They're a nice little 1-1 one -one with Death Touch, and on our turn, they have First Strike, so First Strike, Death Touch, 1-1 one -one is always good, but whenever they attack, we also get to venture into those dungeons, so... You know, we're getting value. Like I said, we're gonna we're gonna try and speed run these dungeons. We're getting through them as quick as possible. We also have a dungeon map, so kind of a bad mana rock, but it's a nice backup way to be like, oh, I'm one shy of finishing a dungeon. Let me just pay three mana and get it done. Last up in this category, and kind of a nice transition into bidding creatures to trigger our commander. In terms of venturing into dungeons, we have Radiant Solar. So Radiant Solar is a 3-6 flying lifelinker for 6. More importantly, we could pay a single white, discard it, venture into a dungeon, and gain 3 life. If our commander is on the field, we basically venture twice. Meaning that if we've already ventured twice by the time we go to discard the Radiant Solar, we're going to complete a dungeon, our commander will trigger again and we get to cheat a creature back, that creature very likely being the Radiant Solar. Because the Radiant Solar says whenever it or another creature, specifically non-token, 
enters the battlefield under our control, we get to venture into a dungeon. Uh, Radiant Solar is definitely an all-star in this deck. Now, of course, I just mentioned we're trying to bin creatures, right? Our commander is out here looking for us to throw creatures in the bin. We have a couple ways of doing it. Let's take a look at what they are. Starting off, we have the Burnished Heart. Uh, you know, kind of a commander staple. It's a 2-2 two, two for 3, and for 3 extra mana, we can sack it to look for 2 basic lands. Slam them onto the field. Sh granted, they come in tapped. But, that's fine. We're really here to bin creatures and thin out the deck, and Burnish Heart accomplishes both of those tasks. Curator of Mysteries. A flying 4-4, four, four, which we could use to cycle. Uh, probably does a lot more work in a cycle-specific deck, because whenever... We cycle or discard another card, we get to scry one, but they're really here because for a single blue we get to cycle them away, so we're going to bin them, venture into a dungeon with our commander in the field, and also draw a card. That's value. Doomed Necromancer uh, does two things for us, right? Uh, one, we could sacrifice them, so we're going to bin a creature, and two, we get to return a creature from our grave onto the battlefield. So... Realistically, we could sacrifice the Doom Necromancer, target itself now in the grave, and cheat it right back out. Uh, could be kind of hilarious. We don't generally do that. We're generally looking for one of like our big combo pieces to cheat back with it. But it's definitely good. Eternal Dragon. So Eternal Dragon is kept in the deck from the original, really for that plane cycling. We don't have a ton of non-basic planes. We did add a few new ones recently with these Surveil Lands, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, but just a nice way to be like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and like get ready up, have the ability to plane cycle. And at our upkeep, if we really wanted to pay five, we could return them from grave to hand. But we generally don't bother. Likeness Looter is up next. They let us... Tap them to draw a card, discard a card, and we can actually pay X and have them become a copy of a creature in our graveyard with mana value X, except it has flying and this ability. We can activate that at sorcery speed. So, if we have something like the Radiant Solar in Grave and we're not ready to quite cheat it back yet, uh, Likeness Looter here could just become a copy of it. Speaking of looting, we have the Merfolk Looter. Not quite as strong, but also a little easier to get out, since it doesn't require two different colored pips, just a single colorless and a blue. But they are also a looter, so we're going to tap them to draw a card, discard a card. We're generally aiming to discard creatures with this, obviously. Our commander will trigger. Chef's Kiss. Mole Drifter. This is an evokey boy. We're looking to evoke them. So for three mana, they'll pop onto the field. Let us draw two cards, and then hit the bin. So, we're going to trigger our commander. If Radiant Solar's in the field, we'll also trigger Radiant Solar. It's a little bit of card advantage for us. It's a good time. Obsessive Stitcher. Another looter mechanic, and has the option of letting us sack them to return a creature from graveyard to battlefield. So, just another way of being like, yeah, cool. You know, I'm potentially triggering two ventures off of this, one from the creature going to the grave, that being the Obsessive Stitcher, and one from a creature coming back, ideally with Radiant Solar either in play or being the creature that we're cheating back onto the field. Auric Lore Mage is a beast in this deck. So, he is a 3-3 three, three for 4. He has an ability where we get to tap and look for any card in our library and put it into our grave. If it's an instant or sorcery, he gets a little bigger. Let me tell you something, it's never an instant or sorcery. This is a repeatable graveyard tutor in a reanimator deck, and it's so good. I really feel like it's undervalued, and it's like, oh, he's a little slow, he's a four cost, he has a tap ability to do this, da 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 da. I don't care. I think that he works wonders, he makes the deck super consistent. Plague Crafter. Uh, so when Plague Crafter ETBs, each player has to sack a creature or planeswalker. Each one who can't has to discard a card. So, worst case scenario, 
he comes out, he sacks to his own effect, letting us bin a creature, venture into a dungeon, and also takes out some, some creatures our opponents control. Romnom Unicorn is also from the original deck, lets us sacrifice it at instant speed to destroy target enchantment. There are definitely some powerful enchantments that run around in Commander, and the ability to sack this and just blow them up is Chef's Kiss. Also, when they've been, obviously we're venturing. Shriek Ma. So a fearful 3-2 for 5, we're never paying that 5, we're always evoking it to destroy a target non-artifact, non-black creature. With that bin, obviously we're venturing, huzzah. Violent Tumor. Entomb on a creature. So it is a 4 cost 2-2 death toucher. When it ETBs, we get to look for any card we want, put it in the grave, call it a happy. So again, we're looking for our big combo pieces, we're trying to bin them in order to reanimate them, and win quickly. Speaking of tutors, we're looking for Buried Alive. So Buried Alive is going to let us look for up to three creature cards and put them into the grave, then shuffle. So this is only going to trigger our commander once, but our ultimate combo happens to be three creatures, so this alone could get all of them in the bin. And with a little bit of extra, like, setup in terms of ensuring that we've already ventured three times, we cheat back the Radiant Solar and get more easy ventures happening moving forward. Intomb follows up that Buried Alive, and at instant speed for a single black mana, we could take any card we want and bin it for ourselves. Guess what? If we don't have Radiant Solar yet, it's Radiant Solar. <laughs> so, bending a creature at instant speed, triggering our commander, venturing through dungeons, ideally recurring, we're moving through here. Fact or fiction. So, I think this was also in the original deck, but we're gonna pay four mana, reveal the top five, and opponent will separate those into two piles. We get to put one of those piles into our hand, the other into the grave. Generally speaking, we're binning whichever pile has creatures. We almost don't care what those creatures are. Our opponent could realistically, if they know the deck well enough, be like, yep, everything's in one pile. And we'd probably still bin it, uh, assuming there's creatures in it, uh, to get us that trigger. Forbidden Alchemy. Kind of similar, we're going to look at the top four cards of our library, we're going to put one of those into the hand, and the rest into grave. We could also flash it back for seven, a little pricey, but still pretty good. Pull from tomorrow is a nice way to draw a bunch of cards and then discard a single card. Uh, we can do it at instant speed, so if we have a bunch of mana left over, right, we basically wait until our opponent goes to pass. At their end step, we cast Pull from tomorrow. Fill up our hand to give us options for the following turn, ditch a single creature, call it a happy. Vanish into memory. So Vanish into memory is going to let us flicker a card. Uh, it's kind of a slow flicker, but that's okay. We're going to draw cards equal to that creature's power, and then at the beginning of specifically our next upkeep, we're going to return the creature to the battlefield, and if we do, we're going to discard cards equal to that creature's toughness. So... Slow Flicker, Card Draw, and the ability to bin. So this actually does quite a few things for us. Vanish into Memory is pretty great here. Cemetery Tampering from New Capenna has Hideaway 5. Beginning of our upkeep, we're going to mill 3 cards. Then if there are 20 or more cards in Grave, we get to play the Exiled card for free. Uh, generally speaking... We don't tend to see 20 cards, so the hideaway is going to be something that you don't care if you don't get to play it. You really don't want to hide away one of your combo pieces. It's really here for that repeated forced mail at upkeep, ideally hitting a creature. Vampiric Rites. So for one and a black, we're going to sack a creature to gain a life and draw a card. Um... Really just a way to bin creatures on every turn. Ideally ones that are sitting on our board. Not ideally. 
only cards that are sitting on our board, but that's okay. Moving into the lands, we have High Market, again, from the original deck. Uh, taps for a colorless mana, little boohoo about that, but let's just sacrifice a creature to gain one life. We also have the three Surveil Lands that makes sense to have for this deck, with Meticulous Archive, Shadowy Backstreet, and Undercity Sewers. So all these lands do enter tapped. They are searchable because they are the basic land types of the colors that they tap for. And when they enter the battlefield, we get to surveil one. So we could potentially see a creature on top, go ahead and bin it, venture into a dungeon, keep our ball rolling. With all of these creatures now chilling in our grave, it is time for reanimation. So, I did touch on it already, but we are going to go back to Barrowin of Clan Under. Whenever they attack, if we've completed the dungeon, we get to cheat back a little, little dinky dude. We have quite a few of them, so, you know, a pretty vital recursion strategy. Doom Necromancer, again, we touched on them, we're not going to linger too long, but we sack them, we reanimate a different creature, or it could just be Doomed Necromancer all over again. Either way, we're having a good time. Obsessive Stitcher, again, you know, we sack them, we keep back a creature, huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. Sun Titan, so whenever he ETPs or attacks, we get to return a 3 CMC from Grave to Battlefield. I skipped over the Karmic Guide, but we're going back for it. Um, they have Echo, so we're never paying that Echo cost, they're almost always just going to go ahead and die for us. But more importantly... They don't have any restrictions on terms of, like, what they're going to get back. So, we're cheating back one of our combo pieces in general. Dread Return, we're going to return a creature from Grave to Battlefield for 4 mana. We could flash it back by sacrificing 3 creatures, which would also help us to bin more creatures. Graceful Restoration, so we're going to return a target creature from Grave to Battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Or, we can return up to two creatures from Grave to uh, Battlefield with power two or less. Uh, so it's really a situational thing. If we already have our Radiant Solar on field, you know, we might cheat back two little dinky dudes. Um, especially because we have some clone spells in here, so their power is zero, and Radiant Solar, not legendary. So we could really stack those ETB Venture effects. Unburial Rites, so for 5 mana we get to return any creature we want from Grave to Battlefield, and we can flash it back for 4. So even if we end up bidding this through milling or anything, we could always recast it, or cast it for the first time in that sense, with a flashback. Victimize does two things, right? We're sacrificing a creature, we're going to return two creatures, there's no restrictions. Victimize is really strong. And yeah, it's at sorcery speed. Yeah, they're coming back tapped. But trading one creature for two creatures is just good, and I don't understand why this card is as cheap as it is. Because it's only like 50 cents. Of course, the one that needs no introduction in terms of reanimation is Sephiroth of the Hidden Ways. Whenever we complete dungeons, we get to return a creature from Grave to Battlefield. We have one last category, and then we're going to get into our combo. Let me know if you figure out the combo before we get to it. Um, kind of a hint, but this section's a part of it. And this section is Flicker and Clones. Serving off our clones, we have Clever Impersonator, a 0 0 4, 4 but enters as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield. So we could copy our opponent's things, we could copy our own things. Um, generally speaking, we're using it to copy our own, but, you know, situation could call for it. Glass Pool Mimic, a 0, zero for 3, a little cheaper. Um, they enter as a copy of any creature that we control, except that they are a shape-shifting rogue in addition to their other types. Felidar Guardian, a nice little flickery boy, a 1-4. Four, four, and when they ETB, we get the Flicker Dude. Undercover Operative. So, another clone 
that's a four cost zero zero they do enter with a nice little shield counter on them we're looking to copy our dudes last up is wisp weaver angel a six cost four four with flying whenever etbs is going to flicker a thing we also have soul herder a slower flicker because it's only going to trigger at the end step but every time we flicker something we do get to get a little bit of a, a little plus one plus one action for it we're not done yet though we have flicker of fate so for one in the white we get to flicker a creature or enchantment Ghostly Flicker is very similar, a little stronger, because we get to do it to two different things, and it only costs one extra mana. Vanish into Memory, we kind of already touched on. It's a very slow flicker, but technically a flicker. And last up, another end step flicker ability is Teleportation Circle. So at our end step, we're going to flicker a single creature. Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. Now it's time for our big finishing combo. The combo consists of Radiant Solar, either a Felidar Guardian or a Wisp Weaver Angel, and either a clone or the other Flicker creature. The idea being that Radiant Solar is already on the field. We cast one of our Flicker creatures Ideally, the other one is already on the field as well, or a clone spells on the field, or one of our flicker creatures are on the field, and we're casting a clone, or reanimating a clone. Either way, we go ahead and flicker the two flicker creatures, or a flicker creature and a clone, back and forth as they ETB. This leads to infinite enter the battlefield triggers, which leads to infinite dungeon delving for us. We tend to run through the Lost Minds of Fandelver the entire time. So we're going to draw our entire deck. We're going to ping each of our opponents for each card we drew. We're going to create a treasure for each card we drew. We have the option to stop that loop at any time by flickering the Radiant Solar instead of flickering one of the Flicker slash Clone creatures. And it's, it's basically a guaranteed win. I used to run Thassa's Oracle in the deck as well as a backup. Like, hey, no, I'm going to get this. Uh, so Thassa's Oracle or a Laboratory Maniac would be good additions to this deck that we're not currently running. Um, it's already super consistent. I think by like turn 7 or 8, I almost always, assuming I kept an appropriate hand will hit this combo and win the game but that's the deck uh hopefully you guys liked it if you did you know go ahead and like and subscribe you know give us a thumbs up on uh the video ring the bell all the doobly doos uh but until next time guys good luck with your decks and hopefully next week i think we'll have some thunder junction happening if not i have other decks that i've highly customized so we'll take a look then. Until next time, good luck with your builds.